Hello and welcome back to CQ, the AWS certification quiz show, where we're here to help you prep for your next AWS exam. This week we are reverting back to an associate level exam and we're taking a look at the SysOps admin exam. So book is available on Wiley.com, also available at Amazon.com. So with me today, I have Mark. Mark, tell us a bit what you do here at AWS. Good morning, I'm Jay. Hi everyone. Listeners. Very formal, Mark. <laughs> Uh, I'm an enterprise support manager at, at AWS, yep. so uh, I've been been with Amazon for about five and a half years. Oh, uh, veteran! Yeah, a long that time. That might be our longest tenured guest long so time. far. Yeah, yeah, it's been a great journey. I, I love working for Amazon. So, uh, so enterprise support is one of the support offerings at, at, at AWS. We have developer, business, and, and enterprise support, which is our top tier of support. Okay. And we tend we, we we generally find that customers customers that are running large production workloads on AWS really want a sort of high touch, high quality support service. And so that's what our organization provides for, for customers. And you're managing that team yeah, here so in I've, Sydney? Yes, I manage a, a, a team of technical account managers here in Sydney. So great team, team of rock stars. <laughs> Fantastic. So here with me today at Bondi? Uh, yes, so uh, for our international listeners, uh, this is Bondi Beach. It's the famous uh, Sydney beach. If you come to Sydney, you, you must see this beach. Unfortunately, it's a bit overcast there, so you can't see it in its full glory. Because uh, it's a typical Sydney winter day. Yeah, no? well, well, it was sunny earlier today. <laughs> so, uh, you'll see, just in the bottom there, you'll see the Icebergs Pool. It's an extremely cold pool, but there's a, a dedicated um, group of swimmers that swim there yep. every morning. Uh, during winter. During winter. Um, without fail, they get into that to that water, uh, icy cold water every uh, every morning. So it's a, it's a landmark for Sydney. Kind of perfect today because it's definitely not sunny now. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> so Mark, you have your SA Pro Cert, is that correct? Yes, yes, I got that last year. Do you want to tell us a bit about yeah. how the that exam. came about? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's um, what's somewhat unique about that exam, and that it you have to do a lot of reading throughout that exam. So if you've done the associate exams, you'll find that some of the questions are quite brief and you can just sort of blast your way through them. Okay. But the SA Pro exam really has, uh, like some of the answers are, are quite long. So when I, when I did the exam, and it's a longer exam than the associate ones, yeah. um, I took all of the time up to, I had sort of maybe two or three minutes left at the end. And most of that time wow. was, was reading. So you, you only really get sort of an opportunity to read through the questions once or twice. So, so keep that in mind as you go through the exam. Good tip to start yeah. us off. And actually, we had um, Carrie on last week, and she said the same thing that she hit the submit button with less than two minutes to spare yeah. on that clock. Yeah, so, fun. current theme are you ready to talk our viewers through SysOps exam today? Sure, happy Mark? to. A few yeah. questions to go. All right, let's jump into question number one high availability. Okay. You were approached by a company lawyer who is concerned about the availability of their department's Amazon S3 bucket. What could you do to ensure a higher level of availability for their bucket? Okay, so as I read that, I think, well, it's good that the company lawyer is concerned about the S3 bucket. So S3 buckets, Very good. You, know, you, you store objects in S3 buckets and they can be publicly accessible. So um, it's, it's great to see someone's concerned about that. The, when I look at that question, I think, okay, so, so availability is one of the dimensions that they're talking about there, availability for the bucket. Uh, so, uh, so the first answer is uh, Amazon S3 is designed for 11 lines of durability, which, which is actually true, but that's not going to help you with the availability of, of the bucket. So I would, I, would, I would cross that one off. So availability, keyword in keyword, that question. Keyword. Yeah. You need to look for those sort of keywords in these answers because they can, they can throw you. Uh, enable versioning on the Amazon S3 bucket. So, so versioning is a, is a feature that you can, um, you can enable on a specific bucket and that will create versions of, of objects over time. Uh, again, that's not going to bump up the availability yeah. of, of, of that bucket. So then you look at the next two answers, so three and four. Create an Amazon S3 bucket in another region. Well, they both start both with so. that same one. So now you start to look at, well, what is the more correct answer? And uh, so, so I like three because it's quite, it's quite creative. You yeah, could create <laughs> a Lambda function and, and copy that data over to, 
an S3 bucket, but that, that really makes, you know, that's a bit of heavy lifting for a customer. And what you want is to look for AWS services that actually, you know, perform those operations for you. Make life a you. bit easier. Make life easier. Uh, so you need to enable versioning on the bucket. So looking at answer four, which I think is the is the correct one. Uh, People and then, online agreeing with you at the minute. Seventy five yeah, percent choosing yeah. number four. Great. And then uh, enable cross region replication on the bucket, and that's away you go. Yeah, that's the that's the best way to ensure a high level higher level of availability for your bucket. Locking in number four. I'm pretty good. I'm, Let's I'm pretty have a look. Let's close that poll, John. Number four it is, okay. off to a great start. <laughs> is that a bit of... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not on pro though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to question two, application deployment. Yep. Your company uses Chef for automation of application deployment. What AWS service can run using Chef recipes? Or can okay. run Chef recipes, sorry. So what is Chef, Mark? Let's start with that. So Chef is a, uh, it's an open source tool. Uh, it's an orchestration tool. So okay. if you think about, let's say you have hundreds of servers all, all running, EC2 instances running, uh, and you want to maintain configuration across those instances that, that's consistent and that you can manage, um, that's what you would use Chef for. Okay. So it's a, it's a configuration management tool effectively. Uh, and, uh, and so we look at these, so that those four services are AWS services, uh, Elastic Beanstalk Ops Works. Elastic Beanstalk, um, uh, so Elastic Beanstalk allows you to, to deploy applications. So if you're a developer, you would use Elastic Beanstalk. You would create your, your application in, in Java or .NET or Python or Go. Okay. Um, and Elastic Beanstalk will do the deployment for you. But it doesn't use Chef in the back end. So uh, sort of close, but, but, but um, not the right answer. Okay. Code deploy and code commit are actually two of the services that are part of a a broader set of tools. So yeah. we have Code Pipeline, we have Code Build. Uh, they, these all came out last roughly, year. Yeah, I think it was last year. Um, code Commit, I sort of think. So Code Commit is a allows you to create a software repository on, on AWS. If you think about GitHub as, yeah. a, as, as a code repository, uh, it does. It's it's Git compatible, so it, it does use Git. So all of your your standard tools you can use with with Code Commit. Um, but there's no Chef in sight when when you when you look at Code Commit. Uh, code deploy allows you to, to deploy um, application code to a number of um, EC2 instances. Again, doesn't use Chef in the background. So Originally used by Amazon, right? Before rolled correct. out yeah. to our customers. That's right. Yeah, um, which is a common theme for, for, for Amazon. So AWS OpsWorks is is the only one here that that allows you to use Chef recipes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent online. Luckily, all right. 100% that's right. Online, great. <laughs> <laughs> And it is indeed, of course. Number two. All right, let's move on to a bit of RDS. Sure. Will a standby Amazon Relational Database Service, Amazon RDS instance, mm -hmm. be in the same availability zone as the primary? Standby mm. versus primary. I have to say, I, I love the RDS service. You know, just I used to build um, web hosting environments for, for a living, and just the headache of needing to manage MySQL databases or Postgres yeah. databases. RDS just, I love that service. It just takes away all of that heavy lifting, including you know increasing the availability of, of databases yep. by by creating standby instances. Uh, so I, I look at that one and, and I think, okay, it's probably not so not too much thinking you need to do here. Um, would you want a standby instance in the same availability zone as your primary? Uh, I look at that and I, I, my eyes immediately go to to no. Uh, so uh, I'm sure people are familiar with availability zones, but if you, if you think about if you think about the, the Sydney region as an example, yep. we have three availability zones here, and the availability zones are they're geographically dispersed across that region. So they so I like the way I like to think about it is that they're they're far enough away from each other to be resilient, uh, but they're close enough that the latency is low, and okay. so you can have a really good high performant um, experience with with availability zones. So. So uh, my, my guess is number two there. Locking in number two. We almost had 100%, but some people have also locked in number three. What are you thinking about number three? Only for Oracle and Microsoft SQL server-based RDS instances, no. <laughs> <Just> no <laughs> differentiation between the engines. <laughs> OK, let's reveal the answer. Of course, number two it is. Thanks for that, Mark. All right, All right. let's move on to CloudFormation. Uh, what capability of AWS CloudFormation allows you to create resources across multiple regions at the same time? 
So obviously the key word here is, or key words are multiple regions. Yep. Uh, all of those things exist, all of those cloud yep. formation um, things exist. Uh, so let's, let's work through them. So, so a template is a, you know, a template is a template. It's a, it's a, think of it as a piece of paper or a set of, a set of, yep. uh, a, what to deploy. a set of instructions. Yeah, and from the template that creates the stack. And so the stack is your is your collection of AWS resources that you want to manage as a single unit. That that really is the beauty of, of CloudFormation. Rather than creating everything individually, CloudFormation works the magic and, and make sure that the dependencies are taken care of and, and those sorts of things. Okay. So you're left with three and four. You could probably take a guess at what four does. A nested stack is I like to think of it as, as daisy chaining. So uh, you could create one really long stack, um, but it's not really the, the, the most modular or the neatest yeah. way of doing it. What you actually sure. want to do is potentially have one stack create your network, another one might create your storage, another one might create your IAM roles. Um, so nested stack is great for that, but it's still single region. And the key word here is multi. multi yep. So process of elimination, you end up with stack sets. So stack sets can do multiple regions. In fact, they can do multiple accounts as well. So great tool. I'm a big fan of stack sets. Lock in number three. Lock in number three. Three it is. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, halfway through. I think you're doing pretty well. OK. Let's try question number five. Over to S3, Ooh, you have configured an Amazon S3 object to have a public read access control list, ACL. ACL. However, users report that they are unable to access the object. What might be causing this problem? Mm. OK. This is a good one. Yeah, it is a good one. So you have, you have the S3 bucket. And then within that S3 bucket, you have lots of objects. And the objects themselves can have uh, uh, ACLs on those specific yep. objects, um, whereas the bucket uses a, an S3 bucket policy to control access to it. So you've you've got a sort of interplay between the ACLs and and the and the buckets, and, and that this can trip up a lot of people. Yeah. Right? So you, you could think here, well, I've gone and in, with that specific object, I've turned on public read. Yeah. Then why you know, why would I not be able to access the object? So so what might be causing this problem? So uh, well, there's a few <laughs> there's a few answers here that you can sort of knock out immediately. So, S3 buckets don't have security groups. Okay, so that that one's a bit of a, a distraction, I think. I put that in there just to throw you because you can have security groups on your your um, within VPCs yep. as a security mechanism, but they don't work for S3 buckets. So so you you know, immediately sort of knock that one out. Uh, so the 33 percent who have voted for that one. So <laughs> <laughs> close, but, but no. Uh, so static website hosting. So that's a great feature for S3. So yep. if you don't want to create uh, a full-blown website on your S3 objects, you can turn on static website hosting. And if you've got some HTML files in there, it'll you know it'll throw up a, a splash page. That's the way I like to think about um, static website hosting. Um, but that's that's not relevant. Nothing to, to do. Nothing to do with the question. Again, <laughs> yeah. a bit of a distraction. Bit of a distraction answer, I think. Okay, so then you're left with one and three. Yeah. Now so you sort of look at three and think, yeah, that 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 makes sense. You know, maybe there's some sort of permission that I, I've missed here. Um, but that's talking about the bucket owner, you know, that bucket owner full control permission. Yep. So it doesn't quite that doesn't that one doesn't quite fit. So that leaves you with the first answer, which is S3 block public access is configured to ignore public ACLs. So, so on the S3 bucket, you could um, uh, you could block public access, and that would mean that the ACL for the object gets overridden. So yep. If you think about having competing policies, some might say allow, some might, might some might say deny. If there's a deny in there. We're always going to buy. It's override. Deny. Yeah. It's always going to override. So that's that's an important that's an important security concept that should always take into security questions. Uh, and there, there are a lot of questions on security that will 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 sort of uh, trick you on that that interplay between the deny and the allow um, policies. So lock it uh, in. I would say lock in number one. Number one. Just about agreeing with you there. We had a bit of a flick over in answers. 70% yep. agreeing with you, number one. Okay, awesome. And number one it okay. is. Great. All right, let's move on to question six, VPC. 
An Amazon EC2 auto scaling group is failing to scale out because it is attempting to create instances in an Amazon VPC that has run out of available private IP addresses. Mm. Great question. Yeah. What can you do to resolve this situation? Bit of real life here. Well, so this this happens. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I've seen this a lot, where where customers might create, say, a slash twenty seven, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. Uh, a, a slash twenty seven okay. side of range, um, which only gives you thirty two IP addresses and 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 thirty two usable IP addresses, yep. and so, uh, you know, you, you might you might think that your application is only going to be this big, and then you know you have a you have a you have a rush of customers, and you need to expand your infrastructure and. And the auto scaling group is trying to scale out and give mm -hmm. you 100 instances that you can run. Um, and it fails because you've run out of private IP addresses in, in your VPC. So it's actually quite a common scenario. So again, we look at the answers here. Yeah. Uh, I would start with the one that, again, is a distraction. So we do have elastic IP addresses, um, but <laughs> they don't help you in this scenario. They won't help you in this scenario. Um, so you can pretty much immediately cross out number number four. As have all the viewers, zero percent. Okay. So good. Okay. They recognise that distractor. Yeah. Now number one, it's a little drastic. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yes, you you could do that. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, so so again, if you see an answer in there that may work, but it's quite drastic, it's probably not the best answer. There you go. Okay. So then we look at number two and number three. Very, they start with the same, you know, the, the, the same prefix. Add an additional side range to the VPC. Uh, so, sorry, a side range is a class that's into domain routing. So, you think about okay. having an IP address and then a slash and then a number at the end. And the number at the end effectively tells you how big, how big that range is going to be. So, a slash thirty-two okay. is is one one IP address. A, a slash twenty-four is two hundred fifty-four IP addresses. Um, sorry, 256, 254 usable. I'm going back into my networking days now. Um, I can hear that. But you can, uh, you know, you can never make them big enough. So just <laughs> be careful when you create uh, side ranges. You want to give yourself a lot of space. Okay. Um, cool. So, so we're back to two or three. Yes. Uh, expand the side range on the subnets. Well, you can't expand the side ranges after they've been created. So you can cross that one out. Nice and easy. So my answer would be three. Locking in number three. Range. Most people agreeing with you as well. So let's reveal that answer. Number three it is, Mark, you're smashing through these. Yeah, it's good to see. That pro <laughs> exam's obviously come in. A, it has. Yeah. A <laughs> question number yeah. seven, Amazon EFS. What step must you do as part of provisioning and mounting Amazon Elastic File System, EFS, on mm -hmm. your Amazon EC2 instance? Mm. So, EFS is one of my favorite services. Oh, okay. another one. So RDS, yeah, EFS. Well, well, I tend to like the services that, that take away the heavy lifting and just make life easier for customers. I mean, there are a lot of fancy services yeah. and, and, and they're great. I you know, love to play with SageMaker when I get lots of spare time. But so prior to being an enterprise support manager, yeah. I was a, as a technical account manager and I, and I used to deal with customers that would have to create these complicated clusters to, to get shared storage on, on EC2 okay. because before EFS we, we didn't have that. So, you know, I just thought, wouldn't it be easy if they could just a, a nice NFS mount, nice and easy, Amazon will manage it. Um, we can just point our mounts to there and, and away we go. Perfect. So that's EFS. Uh, now, I, I look at that question, and I think, well, there's no iSCSI Amazon EFS endpoint, so we can, we can discount that answer. You don't need to create an IAM role here to, to get access to the um, to the EFS uh, endpoint. Mm -hmm. And you don't need a key management or KMS master key either um, for, for authorization. So again, those three answers are, are, are somewhat of a distraction. Now, if you think about the EFS service, you're gonna need to, which is, a, which is, which is shared, shared storage that you can yep. access through your VPC. Um, so you know, you've got an answer there that talks about VP, VPC subnet, so that's a clue. And well, you have to create mount targets because you need to be able to access them. So, so number two really is the is the is the most appropriate answer there. Hundred percent online, agreeing with you. Locking in number two. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Two, it is. All right, our last question of the day. A bit of Dynamo DB. Are you ready, Mark? Yeah. All right. Another great service. 
managed by Amazon. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Your website will be used to display real-time voting information for a popular reality TV show. You expect extremely high request volumes and you wish to improve the speed of data retrieval from Amazon DynamoDB. How can you reduce response time to microseconds? It's very specific. It is specific. And uh, often you get these questions where there's so much information in there that the, you're it's a, little, a distraction you're itself. A <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then, really, the key to this question is in the last word in microseconds yeah, as, that's opposed it. To, as opposed to milliseconds. Difference between an associate exam and a professional exam okay. as well. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how do we get it down to, to microseconds? Uh, it's the, there's, there's clearly only one. Only get that retrieval only down. Yep. One uh, right answer here. Uh, so let's start maybe from, from four, we'll, we'll work backwards. Not uh, that you're giving away the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so activate DynamoDB auto scaling for the relevant tables. Great idea. So auto scaling is going to, is going to allow our systems in real time to respond to the, the amount of, of traffic that the DynamoDB table is, is seeing. So uh, we'll, we'll okay. check the reads and the writes, and then we will scale based on, based on the request load. Uh, so that's great, but that's not going to give you microsecond um, attention to, okay. your, uh, to your table. Now, table caching for the relevant tables actually sounds like a great idea. Let's put, it let's does. put, a, let's put an in-memory cache in there. Let's make it fast. That's probably going to bring the response time down. Um, but there is no feature called <laughs> doesn't exist. table caching. So <laughs> sounds, sounds great. And a lot yeah. of these questions will have answers that, that sound like they're good ideas, but um, but no, that, that doesn't really work. A little bit of a trickster there. Yeah. Uh, so then, then we're left with increase the read capacity units for mm -hmm. the relevant tables. Uh, again, that's a that's a great thing to do if you're if you haven't increased the read capacity units for your table uh, and you know, your, your website becomes really popular or the, the real-time voting app gets, um, gets goes viral, um, then you're going to be throttled because you don't yeah. have enough read capacity units on the, on the relevant tables. And, and read capacity okay. units are a, a per second measure of, of, of you know, how many reads you can make per second, um, up to four kilobytes per, per read. So you're left with DAX. the Amazon managed in-memory cache of, of, of DAX um, which which brings that response time right down into the microseconds. Okay. So that's that's definitely only one it could have been. Although there is a little bit on surety on the poll there, only eighty three percent agreeing with okay. you, Mark. But let's okay, reveal I'll the answer. Number one, it is. All right. So we are out of questions for today. So what we might do is bring Mark in to do a bit of a tip of the week. <laughs> tip of the week. Uh, so in, in, looking for your personal, um, you know, go-to key mm, tip when you're mm. going to sit an AWS exam. So there's a number of things I would do. The first is uh, get on top of the what's new feed. Yeah, oh, so that's a great one. We haven't had that yeah. actually on the show so yeah. far, and that's actually so good. Because the, the exams could get updated, right? So you could be... Um, All the time. All the time. So I set the old SA, SA Pro. I'm not sure if I set the new one. How I would go. Uh, so so you need to you need to stay relevant with what the services are doing. And we'll get producer any... John to pop that. Um, yeah. In the chat yeah. as well. So you can have cool. it as an RSS feed, or you can you can check the website. I I check it daily. I'm not sure if you need to check it daily, but um, you check it daily. I check it daily, but there's just so many new services and features that are coming through. Wow. And, and sometimes those little features can be game changers for, for customers. Okay. Uh, so so certainly the what's new. Uh, I have a little tip, may not work for everybody, but in preparation for the pro exam. Okay. What did you I, do? Well, I printed out all of the, um, <laughs> I printed out all of the, the practice exam questions. Okay. So, yeah, of course. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so actually I read, I read the white papers first, which I, I think is probably a, a prerequisite, particularly the well, like well architected. Yeah. yeah. And the operational excellence one as well. I, I really like. It's um, a bit of enterprise support in there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you enterprise go. support focuses a lot on operations, so that's that's certainly one that, that I found useful. Uh, but with the practice questions, I sat down with my kids and I got them to quiz me. Uh, Are you serious? And, yeah, and they, I love it. And they, they love that. I mean, they had no. They're only 11, 9, and seven, so they had <laughs> no idea. So not quite what, going for the exam no, themselves, but, yeah, know, but probably not too read, far. Right, they can read. They're going to give you. Um, I love that. They're going to give you that exam pressure that you need. A bit uh, like this. A bit like this, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I found nice. that I found that you know that really helped, and, and I passed the first go. So, 
Naps, thank you so here. much for joining us today. No it's been a thank pleasure you. to have you on. Yeah. Smash through. I think we need to, uh, producer, do you want to make a note? We need a harder questions if Naps is yeah. coming back on in yeah, the I'll future. Come back and take us a hard one. Um, everyone watching online, we are on a break next week. We'll be back the following week where we'll be looking at one of our specialty exams, bringing in another security expert. So we'll see you then. Thanks for joining. See you.